Hello Faith Street Kids! I am so excited to tell you our Bible story for today, which is Moses in the Burning Bush. But before we get started, I want to introduce you to Tina the Termite, who's going to help us with our Bible verse. So Tina the Termite is strong. Okay, and our Bible verse today is, if God is for us, then who could ever be against us? Romans 8, 31. Okay, so again, it's, if God is for us, then who could ever be against us? That's our Bible memory verse for today. If God is for us, then who could ever be against us? So in today's story, we're going to read about a man named Moses. And I know you guys have heard about Moses before. But we're going to learn about how Moses was given a very important job by God. But Moses didn't feel like he was good enough. Moses didn't think like he could do the job. He didn't think he could do it. So in this story, God's people the Israelites. Okay, everyone say that with me. Israelites. That was God's chosen people. They had been enslaved in slavery for years in Egypt. In many, many years they were enslaved and they were mistreated and they were very sad and mad and they cried out, God, help me, help me, set me free. And you know what? God had a plan to set them free. God decided to work through Moses to free his people, the Israelites. He chose to show Moses this dream with a really, really crazy mountainside experience. Okay, so let's go into Moses' shoes for a second. Moses was tending to the flocks. He was, you know, watching the sheep, making sure they weren't eating, weren't running away. And then all of a sudden... He sees and smells something weird. This bush is on fire. Oh my gosh. Woo, woo, woo. Call the fire trucks. This bush is on fire. So what does Moses do? Well, he goes up to it to try to put it out because this bush is on fire. And then wait, something happened. When he came up to the bush, it was on fire, but it wasn't charring or falling down. You know how like when you're cooking s'mores on the campfire, the logs get brown and black and they turn into dust? That wasn't happening. The bush was perfectly fine, but it was on fire. So, hmm, imagine seeing a sight like that. Would you think that's normal? I wouldn't either. And it wasn't normal. This was a sign from God. So we're going to read a little bit more about this, about the burning bush. So here we go. We're in Exodus chapter three. We're going to start on verse three. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this moment, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Whoa. So put yourself in Moses' shoes. God was talking to Moses, right to him through this burning bush. Can you imagine how crazy that must have been for Moses? So as the story continues, God started to talk to Moses about his people, the Israelites. And God knew that the Israelites were very sad and that they were suffering. And God wanted to use Moses to free the Israelites so that they could go to the promised land. The promised land is like a cool place. Okay. And so, but Moses was like, wait, me? He was like looking around like, um, um, sheep, is God talking to you? Or mom, are you there? Is God talking to you? Not me. I can't go and free the Israelites people. Moses did not think he was good enough. He just didn't. 
But God reassured Moses. God was like, hey, Moses, I got your back. I'll be there with you. Even when you feel like you're not good enough, I will be with you and I will take care of you. God said all that, but Moses still didn't feel like it was a good idea. Let's see what Moses thought. Verse 13 says, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. So this was super important because the Israelites needed to know that God was truly the ruler and the king, not Pharaoh. And Moses then asked God, what if, what if they don't believe me? And Moses had a very nervous and trembly voice. Moses didn't like to speak in front of big crowds and big people, which I get. It could be very scary. So Moses was still really, really worried about doing this really big thing for God. And Moses talks about in chapter 4, verse 10, we learn a little bit more about why Moses was so scared. It says, Moses said to the Lord, Oh Lord, I have never been a good speaker, neither in the past and not now, not even when I talk to my servants. I am slow of speech and tongue. So that, like, Moses was getting kind of tongue-tied. Like, he would say the wrong things and he would get really nervous. And so he just didn't want to go in front of Pharaoh, he had to go in front of Pharaoh, the king of, you know, the king who was serving and enslaving the Israelites. Pharaoh was the king of Egypt and ask and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. And Moses was like, I can't say that message to Pharaoh. I can barely talk. And maybe he had a stutter. He was not a good speaker. And God said, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives a man sight or makes him blind? It is me, the Lord. Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. So even though Moses felt like he wasn't good enough, God was like, hey, I got you. I will actually give you the words. God told Moses that he will actually give him the words of what to say. And so again, Moses didn't feel good enough. He did not feel like he could go to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell Pharaoh, hey, Pharaoh, all those people that you need to do your jobs, to get you food, to clean for you, to work on the farms, you actually have to let them go to me so that they can be free. That's what Moses had to say to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Moses was like, oh, I can't do that. But God, even though, Mo, like, even though Moses didn't feel good enough, God was with him. And God gave him the words and the strength to go to Pharaoh and to tell Pharaoh to free God's people. So even though Moses didn't feel like he could do it, God had his back. God knew that Moses could do it. And so we learn this story. This is the first part of our story. And we're going to learn more about Moses as he goes to talk to Pharaoh and what happens. But Moses was very scared. Moses didn't think he could do it because he wasn't a good speaker. Because he was only a shepherd. He wasn't, you know, a powerful king. But God had a plan for Moses. It didn't matter what Moses' skills or strengths were, God wanted to use Moses. And so God did use Moses to do amazing things. Even though Moses was scared and he didn't think he was good enough, God used him. Okay, so now let's think. Think, think, think. We talked about Tina the Turnmite and our memory verse. So 
think, think, think if you can remember back. And our memory verse is, if God is for us, then who can ever be against us? Romans 8, 31. And so that's the same with Moses in this story. Pharaoh was against Moses, but God was with Moses. So there was no way Pharaoh was going to win. Moses and God were always going to win in this battle to get God's people back from Egypt. And so I'm going to pray for us as we close, but I hope you enjoyed this little story. And um, you, Moses has a wonderful story, and we can learn more about Moses soon. But Lord, thank you so much for this great day in that even though Moses was so scared, you used him to do absolutely amazing, amazing things. Amen. So the activity that goes with this lesson is a little exercise. You have to stand up with a Bible on your arms like this. I'll demonstrate and see how long you can hold it for. Can you hold it up like this really high for a minute, two minutes? Okay, so that's the activity because sometimes we feel like we can't do things like we're not strong enough to do them. But with God's strength, we can be. So go ahead and practice your strong activity. And then when I see you in church sometime soon, you can tell me how many minutes you could balance the Bible for. All right. Bye, Phase 3 kids.